Today we're taking on the second to last of the Team Star bases. This one down here is the Fairy type base. Really quite close to where we are at the moment, so we can probably just glide off. But we are very close to finishing. We have one more legend, which is the Dragon over here. And then the other Starfall base we have is the Fighting type one over in the corner that away. So we're definitely in the home stretch as far as the treasure hunt goes, though I imagine We'll probably have a few extra bits, like for example the Pokemon League, and then probably a couple extra story bits to deal with afterwards. And here he is, Clive, or Clavel. Operation Starfall is going well, only two bosses left now. Whole experience has been eye-opening to say the least. I'm curious, what do you think of Cassiopeia? Yeah, really don't know. Is that so? I don't think Cassiopeia feels any hate or resentment towards Team Star. There must be some other reason. What could it be? The gate's over there. Is there another gate down this way? No, that's just a fence. Okay, I did spy an item here, which I will grab. Ooh, avoiding the villain. Thank you for the great ball. Alright, who's guarding this time? Return when it's time for the young master's piano lesson. Okay, so that's a piano tutor, Mr. Harrington. Are they from the Academy? A friend of the young master? I have no idea who you're talking about. Since you seem unaware, I must inform you that this is the base of Team Star's fairy crew. The Rutschbar squad, led by young master Ortega. Or is it like Rookbar? I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. I'm not supposed to give out that information. Do you have any idea as to who this young man might be? I think he might be here to try and take us on. In that case, I take it you're the adversary. I Yeah, I guess that follows. Leaves me with one last thing to ask you. Indulge me in a quick battle. Sure, let's do it. Let us begin. Pokemon Trainer Harrington. Oh yes, this is probably a very good time to highlight that I have properly leveled the team now. I know last time we were lacking a few levels. We're now 54, 54, 52, 52, 52, and 50 on Clodsa. One thing that stands out to me at the moment with my team is my Terra type of rock on Flareon. Absolutely useless. Does nothing for me. It only accentuates weaknesses. There is a way you can change this, but right now I can't do that because it's very expensive to do, and you need to grind a lot. God of Wars, being steel, is actually incredibly useful, because what I can do is I can give it that Terra Blast move, perhaps overwrite Magical Leaf, and then if I Terrastalize, I can use my Fairy type as a steel type attacker, and because it gets steel type, that means it becomes immune to poison, which it would otherwise be weak to. So I feel like this is a really lucky Terra type. Also, I know I said I wanted to evolve that into Galad, but it was a male Curlier that I'd need to be able to do that. My God of War's female, so I can't do that. And I've given it an Assault Vest to overwrite the Lucky Egg. However, I'm going to start with Flare Blitz. So we've been tormented. I think we can't use the same move multiple times in a row. We have to use a different one next turn. But that Flare Blitz is very powerful. That is 120 base power, stamp boosted, with charcoal. So we take a lot of recoil damage from that, but we are incredibly strong. And we also resist fairy type damage because Flareon is fire type. And I guess in a way it does make- oh yeah we can't use um, that again. Why am I just pressing a double edge? Thank you. Ooh, that was very close to another one-hit knockout. Yeah, my Flareon has a lot of recoil damage moves, so I probably need to train its defenses up a bit with, like, EV boosting items. But that quick attack is very handy for anything that survives, just so we don't take too much damage the following turn. And that is a victory. An outstanding performance. Be aware that young Master Ortega's battle prowess far surpasses my paltry skills. Now, if you'll excuse me, well, away he goes. 
used to be the director of the Academy, I think. Oh, really? So that's who Clavel replaced? Tutoring the boss or something? Weird. Alright, off you go. With your weird pose. And we are getting a phone call. From Cassiopeia, perhaps? Yes, the god has been dealt with. Good job. Belongs to Team Star's fairy crew. We'll, we'll go with Ruchbar squad. Their boss, Ortega, is a mechanic of the team. Maybe the youngest of the bosses, but his battle skills are no joke. A real lead-from-the-back type gets his grunt to do all the dirty work for him. But his weak point is his short fuse. Okay, so basically... We're doing the same thing with all of the other bases, it seems. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready. Alright then. But we also need to go down to Terra Blast and teach this to God of War. We'll replace Magical Leaf because it's only base power 60, and we have 95, 90, and 80 there. So we have some incredibly powerful moves on our God of War. And this Terra Blast lets me use Steel-type attacks, which will be very useful in taking out the core of this base. I'm assuming they have their own core. Right, let's go. Okay, here we go. We got the same sort of Tannoy message that we get from the radio in every other base. So we literally just need to go through and defeat 30 Pokemon. You know the drill by now. Okay, I think we're definitely set up well for this base, considering none of my Pokemon have actually taken any damage from this auto-battling yet. Usually they will take some hits if uh, the thing you're fighting is sort of on equal footing. They'll lose a little bit of HP doing this. So this implies that we have good movesets, and the right Pokemon for the job. Also, the frame rate in these battles is getting worse as the game goes on. We're almost done. Nintendo did put out like a proper announcement. Oh, we are done. Yeah, they did put out a proper announcement that they were going to fix a lot of problems with the game, and there was a patch to fix a few... Of, like, I think the RNG-based problems that they were having with online battles. Well, here's the ferret car. But yeah, we're still kind of waiting on them to repair the actual game itself. And there's Ortega. Boss of Team Star's fairy crew. Talk about underwhelming, expecting someone a little more beefed up. I don't care who you are, not like I'm going to lose to you anywhere. If you think fairy types are all about cuteness, you're in for a nasty surprise. Well, all I care about is beating you and taking your badge, so let's get to it with your weird twirly staff, which is apparently going to help you out. Oh hey, look at that luxury ball. The gold bits in the middle are actually reflective. So that's not just like a colouring now, that's actually supposed to be gold in this game. That's a really neat detail. Okay, probably led into the worst start possible. We are fighting against a water type. Now, will it have Aqua Jet? If it was my Azumarill, it would have Aqua Jet. The best thing I could think of doing here is just switching straight out into Soul's Buck. Aquatail. Yeah, that's a powerful move. That probably would have knocked Flareon out. Do I want to give up? I mean, I'm not outmatched, I just swapped straight into your Pokémon with the best thing I probably could have. Um, do I want a Bullet Seed or Horn Leech? I kind of want to leech this damage back, but I think I'm going to Bullet Seed, just because we haven't taken much in the way of hits right now. And this has the potential to do a lot more damage. You see, so now we've matched Horn Leech's power, and this fourth hit will be a KO. I'm not just going to stay in with Soul's Buck, though. I think I'm going to swap out into Pokemon that I've specifically set up for this battle. You know, the new members of my team. So Wigglytuff, we are going to switch out into... God of War? Do I just start hammering the Terra Blast's nail? Or does Terra Blast get rid of your Terrastalize? That might be something to consider. Because it seems very powerful being able to just choose any move to be able to use as an attack. Or rather, like any type, depending on what you've changed its Terra type to. So, let's hit it with Psychic first. That's our most powerful move at the moment. 
drops its special defense. Charm. Second, it, oh, attack harshly fell. That is completely irrelevant to us. Psychic again. Okay, dash bun now. Should I switch, just to make sure I can preserve God of War? Hmm, I think I might go into Gyarados then. As long as we don't terastalize, it won't have super effective damage into me. Now I could try and set up here with... Dragon Dance, which increases my speed and attack. We've dropped Dash Band's attack, so... We could... Dragon Dance, once or twice, depending on how much damage we take. Also, can you pack it in with that stick? That's getting really distracting. Play rough. Oh, that's nothing. Okay, we're setting up. I know I've mentioned previously in this series, like, how easy it is to forget about using status-changing moves. Oh, baby doll eyes drops attack. So if we Dragon Dance again, we're going to be at plus one rather than plus two, but we're still plus two speed. Yeah, I mentioned before how easy it is to forget about status changing moves, but... This is where they become very useful. So we're now at plus two attack, plus three speed, we outspeed the dash bun. We lost attack again, so we're still only at plus one attack, but I think now might be a good time to start attacking. Waterfall here can flinch. We do have access to Aquatail on Gyarados, which is an extra 10 base power, but it's also a move that can miss. Oh well, we're back down to neutral attack. So I think we're speed tying right now then. Which means that this has the potential to attack first, it doesn't. Okay, now we're at minus one attack. I think trying to put our attack back up is going to be pointless at this stage, so I'm just going to keep using Waterfall, and then I'll switch out Gyarados when the car comes in, and then we can use God of War's Terror Blast to do a bit of damage to it. So Dashman has fainted. Rev of Room's next. Oh yeah, we don't get a free switch into the Rev of Room. Why is my team on the ropes? Well, it's because my team's fantastic, Ortega. We've made some changes and we're doing real good. Ooh, Misty Surge. So that sets Misty Terrain, which means that you can't inflict status conditions. Right, we are faster with Gyarados. Steel Roller. That's going to get rid of the terrain, isn't it? Yeah, I figured it would. So it does have Steel-type attacks, which means it would be super effective against my fairy Pokémon, if it wasn't for my Steel-type Terastalize, of course. Magical Talk did a ton of damage there. Well, to be honest, I was just waiting for Gyarados to faint so I could get a free switch into God of War. I basically have to Terastalize before it takes a hit, otherwise that's a lot of damage. And now we have Misty Surge. Which is kind of bad for us, because that means that Steel Roller will do more damage, I think. But let's Terrestrialize, and you see my Terra Blast there becomes super effective. I am curious to see if this gets rid of my Terrestrialize. But here we go. Here's my Steel-type God of War, with an axe sticking out of its head. This is such a good gimmick. See, not very effective now, when that would have been super effective before. Gets rid of the mist, we don't care about that. Terrible last time. That's not a bad animation. I wonder if it'll have like a different color for every other type, and we don't lose our terrestrialized state. So Terra Blast is amazing. I need to give that to more Pokemon. I wonder if it fails, though, if you don't have your Terrastalize on at that moment. But yeah, just 
think of how much health these things have, how much we struggled with these before, to how much damage my god was doing to the thing. That was such an easy battle compared to the previous Team Star fights. Well, Ortega has lost, and you can really see about the short fuse. He's using some real gamer words here. Here we go, about a year and a half ago. So this is another flashback. Your toy car didn't budge an inch. It's not a toy, it's called the Starmobile. We're not giving it enough juice. Designed this thing to be powered by two Chocodad, but it's just too heavy. Yeah, that is a shame, I guess. I really thought it would work. No occasion to be melancholy. If all that effort would have zero payout, I'd have just asked Mother to buy a car for us. This is why people don't take you seriously. Bit of internal conflict here. We even put this in the code for crying out loud. We swore to quit relying on our parents or bags of cash to fix our problems for us. If that hunk of junk doesn't move, get it moving. If we're short on juice, just gotta crank up the power somehow. Okay, and does she have a plan? Trade up my chocolate and have him evolve. That was something that was mentioned in Mela's flashback, actually. So by doing these in level order, we kind of get the story out of order too. Heard myself losing, can't get over how awesome you were in that battle. If any of our squad bosses are defeated, that means we have to step down. Not like I have a choice anywhere, so take the badge. Yeah, but I will take the badge, thank you very much. Belongs to me now. I'm not done yet, here's my favourite TM too. Dazzling Gleam. So Dazzling Gleam is similar to Moonblast. It just targets both slots in a double battle and does slightly less damage. And doesn't have the same sort of stat drop that Moonblast does. But it's still a very good move. But I'm apparently the worst and the most annoying person ever. You know what? I'll take that. And here's the piano teacher back. Time for my piano lesson. Lost my boss title, so I'm all good to head on home. A different matter? There's somebody you want to meet. A distant acquaintance? Oh no. This must have been such an awkward conversation between the two of them. The name's Clive. What's your business here? I want you to tell me something. Son of a wealthy family and heir to a major apparel company. So why join a group like Team Star? What a question to ask someone you've just met. My answer's the same as everyone else in the team, it's because they were being bullied. Yes, Clive, if you haven't worked it out yet, the Academy really did have an issue with bullying. Who would guess, right? The school is all rainbows and butterflies these days. And the bullies from back then don't even go to the Academy anymore. Oh. Oh, I think I know why Clive didn't realise there was a bullying problem now. Because that guy, behind him, Mr. Harrington, was the old director. So maybe he stepped down when the Team Star thing happened, and Clavel became the new director recently. That might have something to do with it. Ah, here we go, we're gonna get some answers on top of that from Harrington here. About 18 months ago, the members of Team Star confronted the students who used to bully them, and an altercation broke out between the groups. Did not escalate into a major incident, caused a scandal of hitherto unknown proportions. As a result of what occurred that day, the students who had perpetuated the bullying dropped out of the academy, one after the other. But there aren't any records of that. My former deputy deleted all records of the incident. Why would they do that? Just as I was puzzling over how best to deal with Team Star in the aftermath of the incident, a certain student came to see me. Declared they would take responsibility for the team's actions, and requested that they exonerate the other students of Team Star from any blame. So I imagine... this will have been their big boss, right? I accepted the request and agreed not to take disciplinary action, which is probably why you're no longer in that position, because you would be fired for doing that. 18 months of overseas studies to the student who took responsibility for the team. Well, I sent them away for a year and a half. Not intended as punishment, wanted them to take some time to rest, so I had them return home to the Galar region. The former deputy director took it upon himself to erase all traces of the incident from the Academy's servers. Shield himself from any blame. Wow, okay. Discovered what he'd done, dealt with him appropriately. 
The inability of myself and the rest of the teaching staff to prevent this also represented a grave blunder on our part. And so he accepted the blame and resigned. And then the rest of the teaching staff quit. Wow, so the entire academy staff has been shuffled over the course of a year and a half. How come you suddenly decided to talk about this now? Team Star cannot carry on in its current fashion, give you a chance to chart a better course. Know why I'm abandoning my friends and going to school without them, not after we've come this far? The friends do mean a great deal to them. Greatest treasure in the whole world. Again, terms that Clive will understand. Well, that is another base brought to a close. We'll have a phone call here from Cassiopeia, I imagine. It's me. Ortega handed over his star badge to you. I see. With its boss no longer around, the Brooch Bar Squad is as good as finished. Even Ortega. We're almost there now, just one boss left. The operation's been a huge success thanks to you. And Clive has also performed admirably as your support. I remember him saying your acquaintances have you known each other long. Not all that long, no. Just since I got to this region. Clearly a reliable friend. Reminds me of the gang back in the day. Which gang? Team Star was formed by a group of students who were being bullied at school. Shortly after forming the team, these students, none other than the squad bosses themselves, confronted their bullies head on. The outcome was a resounding victory for Team Star, but you haven't answered my question yet. The bullies didn't even pick up a fight. Scared of Team Star, they dropped out of school, and Team Star ended up the villains of the story. But that's neither here nor there. You also forgot to mention anything related to my question. Well, we're getting a PayPal of some points. We got 10,000 this time, not bad. And we can make more kinds of TMs. Supply unit rep will be along shortly. Well, there she is. And Maridon has come back to annoy her again, I guess. I don't really get what that additional little section from Maridon really adds to the story. I don't know, maybe they had some familiarity between Penny and Maridon later on in the game and wanted a, a retcon that they pushed in at the last minute. They just wanted the bullies to go away, but then they became the bad guys in everyone's eyes. The students, the teachers, they messed up. Even if just one of them had been paying attention to where everyone was getting bullied, they'd have been able to tell right away that Team Star wasn't the one in the wrong. Okay. Massive idiot creating Team Star and just hoping that plan would miraculously work out. Yeah, you really think so? I'm sure of it. Here's your reward. We've got lots of materials. And the boss is the very last one. The next one that we have to fight, that is. The next thing on my list now is the Dragon Titan up here. The False Dragon Titan. We do have some spots quite close we can fly to. The rest stop on Glaciata Mountain is again the best one. So I'll fly down there. And then we can take on this False Dragon Titan tomorrow. <laughs>